the drawing object shown is lying on a rough horizontal surface. It has a unit radius. So, when it rolls without slipping, the value of linear velocity and angular velocity will be numerically equal. Rightward is taken as positive and clockwise rotation is taken as positive. At the instant shown, uh, well, it is shown at rest, but we can uh, probe and give it an initial condition like uh, angular velocity of 2 radian per second and initial velocity of 12 meter per second. That is, the translation velocity is pretty high. Watch what happens. It slipped initially and then eventually started rolling without slipping. Observe the distance between the dots here that indicates uniform motion these dots are equidistant. Initially you can see that there is an acceleration to the right and the friction caused a reduction in that uh, linear velocity and increased the angular velocity. So, eventually you got this condition you can notice that the final state is this the angular velocity and linear velocity numerically equal. The blue vector represents the translational velocity of the bottommost of the object and the red vector represents the linear velocity of the bottommost point uh, of the rolling object. So, when they are equal that means velocity of the bottommost point is 0 and the body is rolling without slipping. Watch this again. Again there is initial slipping friction acts against motion that is to the left and then causes it to roll without slipping. We will try another setting. This is uh, an angular velocity in the counterclockwise sense and it has got a large velocity in the forward direction towards right. Watch what happens. Watch again. You can see it is rotating the wrong way initially and the bottommost point has uh, a linear velocity to the right which is very large compared to the velocity to rotation and so friction acts to the left and slows down the body and you can see that initially the dots are okay, they are getting slow closer and eventually the spacing is equal. So, this is motion with uh, uniform velocity and here the body has slowed down watch again. So, the direction of rotation has changed and rolling without slipping has happened with this condition that is well the linear velocity and uh, angular velocity are numerically equal because radius is one unit in this case. In this case the linear velocity is 0 and uh, initially it is only rotating in the clockwise sense. If there were no friction it would have stayed at the position shown, but friction would act uh, to the right because the the linear velocity due to the rotation is to the left initially that red vector indicates that. You can see it is slipping and then eventually. So, in this case friction has caused a translation it has opposed rotation and has caused translation and, uh, and the body has eventually acquired that v is equal to r omega that is rolling without slipping condition watch that again. This is an interesting condition we will give it a counter clockwise rotation you can see a minus sign here for the initial angular velocity and uh, rightward linear velocity check what happens. It comes back that is interesting huge angular velocity in the counterclockwise sense the bottommost point has a rightward velocity friction 
add to the left but because of the check that again when its linear velocity is become zero it's still rotating so there's still rightward velocity for the bottommost point friction acts to the left and so friction is causing translation watch that again this is a wrong rotation for the rightward motion for the rightward motion should rotate in the clockwise sense but initially it was rotating counter clockwise and had a rightward velocity so it moved rightward but then it had a very large angular velocity and when the linear velocity became zero due to friction friction continued to act then produced a translation to the left there is one other interesting condition here watch this this is this is a dead rest well the velocity linear velocity and angular velocity become zero at the same moment so the body has come to rest that's a bit of a surprise right you don't expect this behavior both linear velocity and angular velocity become zero well what is the behavior depends on the initial condition so that's what you see here and uh, check this out again this is kind of unexpected in the sense that uh, the object which is pushed away from you is coming back and it has not hit anything the frictional force acting at the bottom has done all this so it's starting to roll without slipping you can observe the dots at the top initially you can find that there is acceleration the dots are spacing between the dots is increasing that's because of acceleration then the spacing has become equal so this uniform motion initial conditions of uh, motion of a ball lying in a rough horizontal surface are as shown this has got a velocity v not and uh, it's rotating at omega not this could be the result of hitting a ball a little above the center that hit will produce a rotation plus a translation and these are the conditions which are the result of whatever that might have been done to the ball we're trying to imagine one case hit above the center produce a rotation and translation a condition like this this is a rough surface if it were a smooth surface this state would have remained the same the bulbs velocity would not have changed changed because the forces involved here are normal reaction energy which balance each other and uh, we ignore air resistance so this sort of continued but if there is friction you can see at the point of contact the velocity v not and r omega not are in opposite directions if v not equals r omega not that point of contact would have zero velocity and the ball would continue moving without any change in state that is v not would be equal to r omega not but if that's not met let's say v not is greater than r omega not so if v not is greater than r omega not the velocity at the bottom most point will be this way and friction would oppose and act like this this is kinetic friction because it's slipping the torque of this frictional force will cause a rotation that is increase the angular speed and reduce the linear speed because it's opposite in direction so the other force are n and mg which balance out so it's an idealized situation there's no deformation so n and n, n and mg act right through the point of contact so the torque of those forces about this point would be zero you would like to determine what happens well because of this friction we said uh, the speed decreases and uh, angular speed increases so some uh, time later this is the condition we have this has got a velocity v and an angular velocity omega v is less than v not and uh, angular velocity omega would have increased from omega not to omega and and now uh, say v has become equal to r omega v v v not has been decreasing that v has been decreasing and omega has been increasing so v could become equal to r omega at some moment of time 
So during this time friction has been acting and say beyond this it will continue to roll without slipping. So our intent is to find that V is equal to V and omega when V is equal to R omega that is rolling without slipping is uh, starts happening. One way of doing this is uh, identify the cause of the change. We already have done that. This is kinetic friction Fk say this is mu kn right n is mg. So if the time taken is some t for this so you could write an equation like Fk into t equals change in linear momentum and that's mv minus mv naught. This Fk is to the left so we put a minus and we'll choose a coordinated uh, axis for a clockwise rotation you choose right as positive right so you have these are the positive senses for rotation and translation n is equal to mg that's the vertical direction equation and the torque of fk that's in this positive sense fk into r into t that's the angular impulse that should be equal to what change in angular momentum that is i omega that's final angular momentum minus i omega naught so you can see that the uh, frictional force is increasing the angular velocity. It's positive in the positive sense, and uh, frictional force decreasing the linear velocity. We don't want frictional force to well be in our equation, so we'll divide. If we divide this, well, minus one by r equals m v minus m v naught by i omega minus i omega naught. So, a little manipulation will give us, uh, there's a minus sign here, there's a minus sign here. So, I omega naught minus I omega, right, is MVR, MVR minus MV naught R. And V is R omega. So, we'll replace uh, either omega by V by R, depending upon what we want to find. So, this omega naught is a given condition, I omega naught minus I omega I into V by R equals M V R minus M V naught R. Our interest is to find that V. So we'll transfer this to the other side. V into well M R. This will go to that side and become positive I by R. This is gone that side. This has come to this side. So I omega naught. plus mv naught r, mv naught r. So we got v here, the final velocity of course. So this is one way of solving the problem. Well, we can simplify that and then that's the result here. Another uh, very interesting way of solving this problem is uh, considering the quantity angular momentum of this body. This is in combined translation plus rotation. And if you choose a point on the floor, there is something interesting happening about this point. Normal reaction and mg share the same line of action. So the torque of those force about this will balance out. That will be zero. Friction passes through this point. So torque of that force also is zero. So if net torque is zero, the angular momentum should not change. So you just need to write an equation for angular momentum about this point. Well, what is the final angular momentum? MVR, right? V is, uh, this is R. So angular momentum about this point, R bar cross P bar, will come out to MVR. And uh, then that I omega, that is the in combined translation plus rotation, this is what you do to get the angular momentum. And this should be equal to initial angular momentum. Initial angular momentum is what? Mv naught r plus i omega naught. Omega is v by r. When uh, you've got eventually ro rolling without slipping condition, omega is v by r. So v into mr plus this v by r. So this will be i by r. This is mv naught r plus I omega naught. 
So this is what we got V equals uh, name V naught R plus I omega naught by MR plus I by R MR squared plus I and into R C. Interesting. Well, when it starts rolling without slipping, this is the result. If V naught equals R omega naught, you can see that, uh, well, V becomes equal to V naught. It doesn't change. Friction would not act in that case. If V naught equals R omega, you can substitute that there and work it out. If V naught equals R omega naught, then friction wouldn't act. Angular velocity would not change. Linear velocity would not change. And that's what this is uh, the result of friction. An interesting role friction has got here. Well, it is a post translation and then aided uh, rotation. But that's not the job of friction. Friction opposes relative motion. In this case, it happens to, uh, well, aid rotation and oppose translation. But there are other cases where it opposes translation and aids rotation. There are some very interesting cases here. Uh, well, for example, the ball can be hit below the center. This omega naught would be negative. And if it is sufficiently large, you can get V as negative. That is the ball, when it is hit like this below the center, it goes away and slows down. Velocity becomes zero and then comes back. That is very interesting. So that is the case when uh, V naught and omega naught. Omega naught is in the opposite sense to what we have shown now. That is the result of heating from below. It is really nice. Well, in the sense... Uh, you found a quantity which does not change during the motion. The angular momentum about a point on the floor. The unknown force friction got eliminated without your having to involve it in the equation, whereas earlier you involved it in the equation and then eliminated it. It is good that what you are not interested in, what is troubling you, doesn't come up in the equations. Well, and you found that can happen if you consider the property of angular momentum.